happiness. So, you know, if it's a relationship that's challenging for you, or if it's your health concerns, what it, what can I do to to work harder? And instead of waiting for someone else to make things better, instead of waiting for dot 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 to happen, if you know if this happens, then I'll do that. Okay, but right now, if nothing else changes and nothing else happens, if you want, <laughs> fill in the blank. You know what can you do today, right mm-hmm. now? Not not the first of the month or the first of the year or the or when something else right now there are things that we can do to take control of of the situation maybe not you know entire control there's many many things we cannot control right but we can control our own thoughts our own actions and our own feelings we can control that and that that's quite a bit (laughs) that's pretty empowering right there yeah that's that is empowering that we can control um our own thoughts our own decisions um, we can't control others. <laughs> so no, we can't I, control a lot that's going on right now, especially in COVID times. And it's very easy to sink into the poor, poor me, poor us, poor whichever. But you know, you, we don't have to go too far to figure out, you know, to look at people that are much, much, much worse off than us. And there, even though, even though we're so limited, you know, we are very limited right here and right now, and things that we can do and who we can see. There's so many things that we can do. Um, that just looking through, looking through that different lens is, I find very, very empowering and don't, you know, make no mistake about it. Like I get cranky as the rest of them and sad as everybody else and frustrated. And I, I screw up on a regular basis and, um, but you know, it's, it's shaking yourself out of it. And, and also, I guess, I think I'm babbling now, but I mean, so I'm saying shaking yourself out of it. Sometimes we need help. Like most of us need therapy. Even if you don't think you need therapy, you probably need therapy. Like (laughs) just get some therapy. You'll be like, so I actually started therapy this year for my friend. Um, She runs an art therapy school and these students graduated, but they needed, they needed hours. So I'm on the board of this, this uh, art therapy school. And I'm like, okay, just to do a favor, you know, for these students, I, I don't need therapy, but I'll, I'll do this for them as a favor. And that's so that I can recommend it to other people and tell them what it's like. Well, I start and I'm like, <laughs> so I thought I'm doing this as a favor, right? I'm doing this uh-huh. and I, I'm going through it. I'm like, oh my God, I do need therapy. <laughs> it's art I, therapy. Is that what you said? It, it, it's called art therapy. So it's, I said to them, poor you guys, cause you got two, um, two things to overcome here. First of all, you've got, you know, people saying, well, I'm not good at art. And then you've got people saying, I don't need therapy, but it's, it's kind of therapy through art. So you don't at all need to be good at art, but it's, you know, using the tools of art to work through issues that you have. But th- I just thought it was hilarious that I was doing this as a favor. And then I'm like, oh my God, I, sh- I should have been in therapy 10 years ago. <laughs> we all need therapy. <laughs> so, so all that to say, get help, you know, get help if you need help, if you are feeling, you know, d- more depressed or more sad than you, than usual and, and that you think is normal, get help. But, and, you know, there's, there are simple things we can do in addition to that. Um, if it's, you know, more simple issues, that's it's just, you're feeling frustrated or you're feeling, there are things we can do for ourselves to make ourselves feel better. Yeah. And what do you think holds people back? What, why do they hold back from um, reaching out and um, taking care of themselves and being responsible for them? What, what, causes them to hold back well i think if you all if we all looked in the mirror that would be what is causing us Mm. holding us back exactly (laughs) exactly i think that we you know we and this i'm going to generalize and say especially women you know we feel that we think we need to be all things and all people and all knowing um all the time and so to ask for help or to um even to sometimes to dream bigger. Like I had a big thing when I started this, this profession was like, who do I think I am to be talking to these people who have more initials after their name than I have in my name? (laughs) Who who do I think I am, you know, to deserve this? And then, uh, you know, after I like, we we also I think that that holds us back too, right? That imposter syndrome, like we think we're not good enough, or we're not as good enough as this person or that person. Or, but everyone has, like you said earlier, right? We all have a voice. We all have something different to to share. We all have experiences that, and I think in this whole world of personal development, honestly, Lorraine, 
you know, there's really probably not a whole lot new under the sun from all these people right. you've interviewed. Like, you know, we right. all just have a different way of expressing it. We all, you know, I have a story that might resonate with this person. You have a story that might resonate with that person, but there's not that much new under the sun in the world of personal development. If you want to be happier and healthier, there are some key things to do and, you know, here's some ideas and Right. You get some from a motivational speaker. You might get some from a podcast. You might get some from a person you met uh, down at the beach. You know, and I think that's our job is to collect all these ideas. We are adult learners. This is I, I figure I'm an adult learner. I have a little imaginary toolkit around my waist. And my job as an adult learner is to, is to look for tools and tips and strategies and ideas from wherever I can find them and fill up my toolkit. So that right. when something's driving me crazy, I can start pulling things out of this toolkit and you, you know, just keep using things until I find one that works. Right, right. Exactly. And being resourceful for yourself and and almost being awake to your environment to find out there there's cues all around us, but sometimes we've almost numbed ourselves so that we don't see it. And um you know, like even even your inspiration in doing a tri <laughs> triathlon amazes me because how many people would do that? Now, what? I, I'm one more question in clo in closing, and then we'll get to you can give us your contact information. But I want to know um, because this time goes very quick, and I'm happy to tell you that Stephanie is coming back here next week. But I want to know what motivated you to run in a um, run. It's run, swim, and bike, bike. correct? Yeah. Yes. Yes. What motivated you to do that, Stephanie? Well, the funny thing is I couldn't even swim like when I started this. So <laughs> how it started was we were it was a, bunch of, a bunch of girls all together and we were just having a chit chat. And the question that went around was, what is something you will never do? Something you will <laughs> never do. And I said, I will never do a triathlon. And my friend says, you know, at my lake, they have this thing called a try a try where it's like a small swim and a small run and a small bike. And I could just feel something in my head at that moment go, huh? Like, because before all I ever saw or heard of was this long swim and a long run and a long bike. And I, I couldn't swim really, honestly. Um, but when she said that, I could feel something go, huh? And I really love, like, I work well with challenges. I work right. well with, and I just, I love, I'm a very experiential learner and I love learning. So I was like, I don't think I could do like a full on triathlon, but I think I could do a try a try. And <laughs> yeah, that's kind, of, that's kind of how it started. And then I have, I had, luckily me, I have a bestie that uh, says yes to everything I suggest. So we do these crazy things together, but it was a, it was quite a, it could be a whole, it could be a whole show, just the triathlon story. But anyways, <laughs> carry on. <laughs> That's the story. I, I, I love it. And, and what you said in there is you're an experimental uh, learner and I am too. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And yeah. I am too. Uh, I learn from experiences. I learn from getting out there and pushing myself. And I want the viewers to know out there that um, whatever Whatever you're thinking that you can't do, there are steps that you can do within that that you can do. I am I am a hundred percent believer if there is something in your heart that you think you cannot do, you possibly can do it because it is amazing when we set our minds to it, just like you, Stephanie, what we can do and we can accomplish. And it changes your life. Those experiences that you're talking about change your life for the better. And because we're almost time, out of time, I want you to let the audience know how they can contact you and that you brought a generous free gift to them. So let them know, um, Stephanie, how they can contact you. Sure. Um, so if you would like to access my first book for free, you are more than welcome to go to stephaniestaples.ca slash Wes, W-E-S, stands for When Enlightening Strikes, which is the title of the book. <laughs> um, uh, Stephanie's with a PH. So Stephanie Staples, like the store, dot CA slash Wes. Great. That's wonderful. And um, 
I, I love the title. <laughs> That's great. Yes. It makes it it, it piques my curiosity. So, and if you're not a reader, but you just want uh, the e-newsletter, e you can go there just to sign up for the e-newsletter as well, which pops out when I have a, an idea or two. Yeah, yeah. And your website is so fun, too. I would thank like you. to thank you, Stephanie, for coming in. And I'm so excited that you're going to be back here next week. Lucky me. And, yes, I'm so excited. <laughs> and if you out there have any comments on our show, please contact me by heading over to my we website at nevertolateever.com. And in closing, I'd like to ask you one more question. What do you believe, Stephanie, is the single most important character quality that produces resilience? Oh, wow. I know. It's you know, I... <laughs> I really love the word that you 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 use this word either um, earlier, and the word is resourcefulness. I mm. think we we have to find that quality in ourselves and dig that up. And we are resourceful. We are strong. We've gotten over crazy things before. We're going to get over crazy things again. And um, yeah, I'm going to say I'm going to go all of my money on resourcefulness today. And I love it because in probably all my hundreds of interviews, I've never heard that word as um, an important character quality in, boy, um, in building resilience. But it is. Being resourceful mm -hmm. is an amazing quality. And it that's is. what you are, Stephanie. So thank you. I want to thank you for coming in. And so excited we're going to see you back next week. And remember out there it is never too late it is never too late to be resourceful it is never too late to try and uh, no not try but to do a triathlon it is never too late to follow your dreams it is never too late to live a life of purpose i promise it is just never too late ever and we will see you back here next week bye stephanie see you next Thanks, week Lorraine. thank you, you.